Pentecost. And if you're new to the Episcopal Church, it is called Christ the King Sunday. Um, you've probably just got the theme in the opening hymn, and you'll hear it over and over again. A lot of kingdom, a lot of king imagery today in the readings and in the hymns. Service begins in your lesson leaflet. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. reading from 2 Samuel chapter 23. <clears throat> These are the last words of David, the oracle of David, son of Jesse, the oracle of the man whom God exalted, the anointed of the God of Jacob, the favorite of the strong one of Israel. The spirit of the Lord speaks through me. His word is upon my tongue. The God of Israel has spoken. The rock of Israel has said to me, one who rules over people justly, ruling in the fear of God, is like the light of morning, like the sun rising on a cloudless morning, gleaming from the rain on the grassy land. Is not my house like this with God? For he has made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and secure. Will he not cause to prosper all my help and my desire? But the godless are like all thorns that are thrown away, for they cannot be picked up with the hand. To touch them one uses an iron bar or the shaft of a spear, and they are entirely consumed in fire on the spot. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> Let us read a portion of Psalm 132, said responsibly by half verse. Lord, remember David, and all the righteous of the Lord. How he swore an oath to the Lord, and vowed to the mighty Jacob. I will not come under the roof of my house, nor climb under my bed. I will not allow my eyes to sleep, nor let my eyes slumber, until I find a place for the Lord. 
The ark, we heard it, was in Ephrata. We found it in the fields of Jerem. Let us go to God's dwelling place. Let us fall on our knees before his footstool. Arise, O Lord, into your resting place. You and the ark of your strength. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness. Let your faithful people sing with joy. For your servant David's sake. The Lord has sworn an oath to David. In truth, he will not break it. A son, the fruit of your body. If your children keep my covenant and my testimonies, that I shall teach them. Their children sit on the throne A reading from Revelation chapter 1. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds, every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and on his account all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. <clears throat>
Earlier this week, I had one of those holy moments, one of those moments where you walk into church and the liturgy speaks, and it doesn't happen much for the priest, because there should be no surprises in the liturgy that you have planned, hopefully. However, I wasn't prepared for what I saw on social media just before the Wednesday evening service. A high school friend posted that it had been exactly 30 years since we lost three classmates in a car wreck. And anyone who has lost a loved one knows that it feels like it happened just yesterday. And I was in disbelief that it had been 30 years, three decades. Then I came to Holy Eucharist where C.S. Lewis was the appointed saint for the day. And it was a holy moment for me because Lewis's writing helped me with my pain and my questions I had during those years in high school. The sting of death is painful, as we all know. But 30 years later, I can tell you it was more than grief that caused me to question God. It was the realization if death could happen to my three friends... It could happen to me, or it could happen to someone else I loved. Fundamentally, I wrestled with two questions. What type of world is this, and what kind of king, what type of God allows this to happen? Was it, it was impossible to avoid these questions. I tried my best like most of us do. However, I would wake up each morning, and the first thing I saw as I was lying in my bed was my neighbor's house. I could see it from from my bedroom window. He was one of the three who died. Why was he gone? I'd get dressed, and I would go to school, and I sat in the classroom of a teacher who had lost her son in that wreck. We knew, all of the students knew, why she had to step out of the classroom a couple of times each week so she could cry, and she would come back in. Her eyes would be red. We all knew what she was doing out there. But I wanted to understand why God would allow a parent to lose a child. One would have thought, that after class, the weight room or the wrestling mat would have been an escape for a teenage boy with all these questions. But that was not the case. The third classmate was on the wrestling team. So we watched someone practice hard on a Friday afternoon, and on Monday we came back to practice, 
and we wrestled with the reality that teammate would no longer be with us. Everywhere I turned, I couldn't avoid the questions. For better or worse, I had to learn at an early age that you can't avoid it. I couldn't go around them. I couldn't repress them. I had to go through them. I had to go through them. The poet Rilke says, you have to live the questions. You have to live the questions, and then maybe one day you will live into the answers. Though C.S. Lewis had been dead since 1963, he became my spiritual guide during that time. My Virgil, if you're in Father Beekner's Dante class. He helped me wrestle with the questions we all ask. Why is this world so broken? Why is there so much pain? Who is this King of kings and Lord of lords? And furthermore, can we put our trust in Him? On this Christ the King Sunday, Pilate and Jesus are having a conversation about two kingdoms. Jesus tells Pilate, that if he were the king of this world, his followers would be behaving differently because the kings of this world play by a different set of rules. Jesus says he is not of this world. He's not of this world. Yet he experiences the world's brokenness. The betrayal, the pain, the suffering, and the death. Why does our king do this? C.S. Lewis would say it has to do with love. For there to be genuine love, you have to have the freedom to choose. And having the freedom to choose means humanity will make the wrong choices. And pain and suffering will be present in this world. It's one of the reasons Jesus ends up on the cross. Yet Jesus turns this sinful choice by mankind into something holy. St. Paul says it this way, Even though Jesus was in the form of God, He did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but He emptied Himself. Even though He was in the form of God, He did not regard that equality as something to be exploited, but He did what? He emptied Himself taking the form of a servant and being found in human form, Paul says he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. And he continues and he says it's that cross that becomes his exaltation. It's that cross that becomes his throne. This king sits on the throne of the cross. Yes, the cross is an atonement for our sins, but the cross is also a bridge. A bridge from this kingdom to the next. The cross reminds us that God is present in our pain, and God is present in our suffering. And the cross points us toward the resurrection. The joy of knowing that our pain and our suffering will be redeemed in the heavenly kingdom. What does our patron saint, St. Thomas, say? Remember after the resurrection? He says he won't believe unless he can stick his hands in the wounds of Christ. My friends, the wounds of this world don't ever go away. But Jesus has redeemed them. Thomas realizes this when he places his hand in Jesus' wounds And he says, my Lord and my God. Thomas realizes in that moment that this crucified God is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So let me end with this. C.S. Lewis's writings were shaped by World War II. If you know the wonderful classic of the lion, the witch in the wardrobe, It begins with the children fleeing London because of the Blitz. 
His work, one of his greatest works, Mere Christianity, was a series of radio broadcasts that were spoken during the war because people were wrestling with the questions of why all this happened and who God was. The pain and the suffering of this world are real. And Christ the King points us to two things. The first is that God is with us and that God loves us. That is the message of the cross. God is with you in your suffering. God is for you because God loves you. And the second message is that Christ the King calls us to join Him in bringing the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. We pray for that in the Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Our mission as Christians is to be the Christ, is to be Christ for others, to love and to be present with others in their pain and in their suffering so that they can see glimpses of the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. We can all name the people in our lives who have helped us see heaven on earth. You know who they are. The saints in your lives who helped you see heaven on earth. Lewis says it this way, that we are here in this church for a reason. Lewis says the church exists for nothing else but to draw men and women into Christ, to make them little Christs. Hear that again. The church exists for nothing else but to draw men and women into Christ, to make them little Christs. If they are not doing that, if the church is not doing that, he says all the cathedrals, the clergy, missions and sermons, even the Bible itself, are simply a waste of time. We are called to be little Christ, to bring the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. With Christians across time and around the world, let us join in the Nicene Creed found on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, 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 maker of heaven and earth, of all all that is seen and unseen. We believe believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God God of God, light of light. True God, true God, begotten not made, of one being the Father, through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, and in order to he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And this kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the full of God. Amen. Let us kneel for the prayers. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people and their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For 
all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who claim the gospel, and all who seek the truth. For Sean, our presiding bishop, and Frank, our bishop, and all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in this church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, particularly those on our prayer list, please pray for them either silently or aloud. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy we pray. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, remembering today especially David Powell, Michael Wallace, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. With their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your, in your compassion, compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so hold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins, through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. I have a few announcements this morning. Well, quite a bit of announcements. So um, um, let me get through these. First, welcome if you are visiting with us today. I encourage you to come to coffee hour. I think I saw Ruthie and John doing coffee hour. Thank you all for, for your hospitality. Um, also on Sunday today, um, Bella, Amy, and Ella Rose are at, um, at Happening in Honey Creek. So keep them in your prayers today. It's a great experience, so they're missing some teenagers today, but that's where they are. Um, I want to also say thank you to folks who um, helped out for David Powell's funeral on Friday. That was a wonderful service for somebody who was very faithful in our choir, a faithful member. Uh, the altar flowers are given in memory of, of him, as well as, as um, they're given for the Blackmores as well. So got a double kind of gift today. So Jimmy Singletary gave those. So we thank Jimmy and the Blackmores for that. Um, Important for today, after the service, all able-bodied people that are able to carry down Christmas decorations, we need your help. Um, the altar guild, I think there'll be some people around to tell you what to do, but the trees come down, we need, we need your help just to bring them down. We'll put them in the library, um, and then we'll set them up on Saturday. So if you're also, if you're available after the service today, bring those down, please, please, please do that on your way to coffee hour. And um, if you're around on Saturday at 10 a.m., I think, November the 30th, there'll be some decorating going on in here. So mark your calendars for that. Um, Father Beekner will be leading a class on the Christmas Oratorio about W.H. Auden. That starts on Tuesday, December the 3rd, as we end this calendar year in the church. Advent begins next week, so that starts next week. Um, December the 3rd at 11 o'clock. There'll be more information about that, but you need to sign up with him. Let him know you're coming. <clears throat> There'll also be an Advent. I will be doing the, the, Lenten, or sorry, the Advent book from the diocese, The Love That Is God, and I'll make that the topic of my Wednesday evening um, sermons. Nita, I think is not here right now, but Nita 
wanted me to tell you that on Wednesday nights, not this Wednesday, but on Wednesdays and Sundays, children that will be in the Christmas pageant will be doing some rehearsing. So um, Nita will be reaching out to you. You'll see some information about that Wednesday and Sunday after the service. So get ready for the Christmas pageant. And one last thing on outreach. Outreach, some outreach items. The Good Shepherd team, I think, goes out today. So thank you for those volunteers. Um, let us know do you, if you need more volunteers. Mercer will come your way. Um, there is a blanket drive, as you saw in the newsletter, for Georgia Pines. We'll start that. The box could even be out there. I just wasn't paying attention. But the box will be out there and bring those fleece blankets. That's in the newsletter. That was a huge, huge help last year, and they were deeply appreciative. Um, and then Project Backyard, as you saw in the newsletter, St. Thomas made a gift to them and encourage you to volunteer. They're trying to get 1,600 Thanksgiving Day meals out on Thursday. So invite you to participate in that as well. I think that's all I have, and now it's time for the stewardship word of the day. Kevin. Reminds me of my favorite Christmas movie. Kevin! <laughs> Maybe I'll do that after he talks. <laughs> <laughs> well, good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to, to talk on, uh, on you know, the, the topic of su stewardship, but it's been such a wonderful year. We've been blessed by uh, just your generosity uh, and, and just to watch this, uh, the physical plant just be you know, restored and, uh, and to have so many folks, it's, a, it's just been a, a spectacular year to step back and say thanks uh, to, to this community and, and, and really to think about uh, what stewardship means to, to me. And so um, my name's Kevin Hires. Uh, Stephanie is my wife uh, and, and she's back in the back row. And, and you know, when we first came to St. Thomas, it was 2004, and from the very first day, we knew this was going to be our spiritual home. So, you know, we, we, we saw Emily Eccles, who I had known from high school as Cradle Episcopalian, and the opportunity to, to, to watch our two daughters immediately bond and, and become fast friends. We just knew we were here. And so we became denizens of the back row because we had a precocious two-year-old. And many of you welcomed us and, and put up with, uh, <laughs> with the noise and the chaos. Uh, from the back, and, and really that's been kind of the story that, that I was thinking about this week, and, and being thankful of this, this spiritual home where I could watch my kids, like many of you, grow up and, and you know, watch them along their spiritual journey and have many of you help them along that path, and, and watching your children grow, become adults, become friends with, with me, and, and just like uh, they are with you, but then also to have them come back like Maddie and help lead our spiritual journey and lead this community. So this, this is our spiritual home. And as a home, I've been really thankful this year that we've been able to open our doors and be so inclusive and, uh, and open our doors to, the, to Grace United Methodist Church, to have their community, to add friendships and to add, you know, sort of capacity to think about what we can be as a, as a joint community really does open doors that, that, that we, didn't, we didn't have open before this year. And, and so it's quite possibly a new model for small churches and really gives us a, a you know, I think, you know, as any home, you know, you have neighbors around and, and I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that we've been able to be good neighbors and, and have them join our, 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 um, our community here. You know, we also feel like we're home each Sunday. Um, it's coffee hour is more like a family reunion than it is, uh, you know, just sort of a post uh, a post uh, Eucharist uh, gathering. And and for many of you, I've known you a long time. Jonathan and I actually have known each other since before we have memories. And so it truly is family for for us. Uh, our dads were college roommates. Uh, <coughs> But then, you know, most recently, my professional life, uh, I think in biblical terms, could probably be best described as, as being in the, the, the burning bush business. I, uh, I was a fire manager, fire scientist, and about four years ago, I had the opportunity to take some of the work that we had been doing at Tall Timbers and really take it to, to a national level in Washington, D.C. And so I'm not here nearly as much as I'd like to be, and so I've, I spent a lot of time in, in D.C., and that's going to continue this year, but what that has allowed me to do is while I'm not here, it allows me to think about this community, what I'm missing on a Sunday. And when I come back, you know, it really gives me uh, just, just a lot of joy to, to feel this familiar embrace of you as my family. And for me and Stephanie, we know we're home. Thank you.
Thank you, Kevin. Kevin is also a co-treasurer along with Tiffany, so we thank you for your for your work and support of St. Thomas. And a reminder that the stewardship campaign continues and encourage you to give and to give generously um, this stewardship season. Lots going on. Um, as you did allude to, one announcement I left off, these lights will be put in tomorrow. I think Josh Briones for helping run point on that team. So thank you, Josh. Um, and so campus is gonna start having a little construction project. So call before you come, just a reminder, because um, it could get a little wild. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us in offering and sacrifice to God.
It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. And therefore we praise you. Joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
die, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Turning to page 366, let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him and to you and to the Holy Spirit, in honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always.